Hey guys, in this video I want to show you how to make a vellum inflation between rocks and getting the rocks moving with the inflation, so let's dive. So first let's start by adding a new geometry node. You can dive inside and here you can add a sphere. So here for the settings of the spheres, I will change it from polygon mesh to polygon. And for the size, I will put it to 1, 0.25 and 0.5. I will increase the frequency to 50. And now I can add the first mountain node. So here for the settings of this first mountain node, I will increase the amplitude to 0.5. And here I will uh, go to the fractal tab and I will decrease the roughness to 0 instead of 0.4. Now I can add the second mountain node. And here with this second mountain node, I will change the amplitude to 0.1. And here I will decrease the element size to 0.5 and I will decrease the roughness a bit to 0.35. So now I can convert this geometry to VDB. So let's add the VDB from Polygon. Here with the VDB from Polygon, I will decrease the voxel size to 0.05 to keep the detail of the rocks. And now I can convert that back to polygons. So you can use the convert VDB node. And here you can convert this volume back to polygon. So now let's add normal on points. So let's add a normal node and here we can put the normals on points and you can visualize the normal by clicking on this icon. So now let's add an attribute wrangles and we can create a mask with this attribute wrangles. So here we can create a mask based on our Y positions. So you can type if and here you can create a first condition. So if at P dot Y is below and here you can create a channel. So let's call it channel float up and here you can type this to add a second condition and you can type at p dot y is over and here you can create a second channel float and you can rename it down and now you can create your mask attribute based on these two conditions so you can type f at mask because this is a float uh, attribute and you can type one so now let's visualize this mask attribute by clicking on the node information tab and here you can click on the mask attribute and you can create the channel by clicking on this and now you can put the value of the up channel to something like 0.191 and for the down, you can put the value at minus 0.152. And you can see that we have created a mask attribute like this. So now you can use this mask attribute to create a density attribute. So to do that, let's add an attribute remap node. And here with the attribute remap, you can put the mask attribute here on the original name. And you can create a new attribute based on that. And you can name it density. And here you can reverse this mask by clicking on this to flip the ramp. And you can visualize the density attribute by clicking on this instead of the mask. And now you can see that we have inverted the mask attribute and we have created a new attribute called density. So now you can create a scatter node. And here with the scatter node, you can scatter some points on the geometry. But we want to scatter the points based on our density attribute. So here in my case, I will decrease the total count to maybe 100. And here I will use my density attribute. And you can see that we have scattered some points only on the red part. So now we can create an attribute randomized for the orients. So let's add an attribute randomized. And instead of color, let's put that to orient. And you can put that to 4, as this is a quaternions. Now let's do the same, but this time for the P scale. So let's add a new attribute randomize. And instead of color, you can replace the attribute name by P scale. And here you can put the global scale to 0.5. And you can put the minimum value to something like 0.5 and the maximum to, let's say, 0.7. So now let's add a copy to points. Let's plug the points on the second input. And here you can add a platonic and you can add a transform node and you can plug that to the first input of the copy two points. So now you can see the results. So for the platonic, I will change the shape. So in my case, I will put um, maybe this shape and I will decrease the radius to 0.35. And here with the transform node, I will decrease the scale on the Y axis. Instead of one, I will put the value at 0.5. And now I have this result. So now I want to have a bit more resolutions on this geometry. So let's add the remesh to grid. And here is the remesh to grid. I will put the division size to 0.01. And now you can see I have a bit more topology on this geometry. So I can add a new mountain node. And here with this mountain node, I will keep the amplitude at 0.25. I will keep the element size at 1 and I will keep the roughness at 0.4. So everything is by default with this mountain node. So let's add a second one. And here with this second mountain node, you can decrease the amplitude to 0.02, which is very low. And here you can also uh, decrease the element size to 0.25. So now let's convert that to VDB. So let's use the VDB from Polygon. And here with this one, you can put the value of the voxel size to something like 0.05 to keep all the details of the rocks. And now let's add a VDB reshape node. 
And here is the VDB reshape. You can keep that to delete and you can keep the offset at one. Or maybe you can decrease it to 0.5. I think it will be announced in our case. So now let's convert our main geometry to VDB. So let's take this one and let's add a VDB from Polygon. And here you can put the resolutions of the voxels to 0.005 like we did before. And now you can use a VDB combine and you can plug this one to the first input and you can plug the VDB reshape to the second input of the VDB combine. And here you can go to the operations and you can change it to SDF difference. So here, if you want to have more room between um, the inflations and the rocks, you can just increase the VDB reshape value here. So you can put it at two and you can see it will create a bit more room to avoid getting some intersections. But in my case, I will keep the delayed value at 0.5. So now let's add a VDB smooth SDF. And here you can keep that by default. And now you can convert that back to polygon with the VDB convert node. And you can convert this volume back to polygon. Imagine having access to over 40 hours of exclusive Houdini tutorials, and that library keeps growing every month with brand new content. On Arda Labs, you'll find in-depth Houdini tutorials covering motion design, simulations, product visualization, and more. Plus, you get access to all project files so you can follow along step by step. And right now, we're offering an extra 20% off the annual membership, on top of the 10% discount already included when compared to the monthly plan. This exclusive deal is available for the first 30 people, so don't miss out. Click the link below, your 20% discount is applied automatically. Secure your spot before it's gone. And now you can add the labs delete small part in case we have some small pieces with the VDB difference. And here with the labs delete small part, you can click on extract largest pieces. In that case, we can keep only the main pieces. So now you can add a null and here you can rename it inflation iRes. And you can do the same for this one. So you can take the output of the VDB from polygons and you can convert that back to polygon with a convert VDB node. And here you can convert it from volume to polygons and you can add a null. And here with this null, you can rename it something like rocks iris so now we need to remesh these two objects for the vellum simulation because for now it's very iris to simulate that so let's add a remesh node here and for the remesh value i will put the target size to 0.02 and same for this one so you can copy and paste it with alt and left click and now you can add a null after this one and you can rename this null something like inflation low res now you can add a null after this one and you can rename this one something like rocks low res. So now we can create two groups. So let's add the first group. And here for this first group, we can keep it on primitive. And for the group name, we can rename it something like inflations. And you can put everything to this group. And you can do the same for the rock. So you can copy and paste the group. And you can change the group name from inflation to rock. So now let's create the vellum constraint for the vellum simulation. So let's start with the inflation part. So in my case, I will use a preset vellum uh, configure stressed soft body. So it will create two nodes, one for the vellum close constraints and one for the vellum stressed constraints. So here for the settings of the vellum close constraint, I will keep everything by default. So let's make it simple for the tutorial, but of course you can play with some settings if you want. And for the vellum stressed constraint, I will also keep everything by default, but of course it's up to you. So now let's create the constraint, but this time for the rocks. So we want to get the inflation getting some collision with the rocks. So to do that, we can use our vellum constraint node. And here with the vellum constraint, we can change the constraint type and you can put it to shape match. In that case, we can get some kind of rigid body inside the vellum solver. And now let's add a merge node. So you can rename this one geo and you can copy and paste it. And this one is constraints. So you can plug the first output here of this one to the geo merge. And same for this one, you can take the first output and plug it here. And now you can take the first constraint, which is the little pink dot, and you can plug it here and same for this one. So now we have the geo and we have the constraints. So now we want to attach our inflation part to the rocks. So to do that, we can add a new vellum constraints and you can plug the geo here on the first input and you can plug the constraint on the second input. And here with the vellum constraint, you can change it to glue constraints and you can see it will create some glue between the two elements. And here with the vellum glue constraint, you can play with some settings if you want. So here you can target the inflations and you can increase the max search distance to something like 0.5 and maybe you can also increase the constraint per point instead of one you can put it at five and here you can play with the stiffness if you want but in my case i will keep it as it is so now let's add a vellum solver and here with the vellum solver you can go to the first tab and you can disable the gravity by putting zero here instead of the default gravity so now we can select our vellum stressed constraints and here you can create a group for these constraints and here you can rename the group something like stretch 
trust. And now you can dive inside the Vellum solver and you can add the Vellum constraint properties. You can plug that to the source. And here we can target a group with this node. So in our case, we want to target the groups that we have created for the Vellum trust constraints. So you can enable these options and you can target the group, which is here. And now you can play with the rest length scale value. So here you can define a global scale if you want. But in my case, I will use chops to animate this value. So, so to do that, you can right click on the parameter. And here we can go to motion effects and you can select the um, wave parameter. So it will create a sign function to animate this value. And here for the settings of the wave, I will uh, increase the period to 1.5 to get something a bit slower in terms of variations. And for the offset, I will put it to 0.55. Um, and for the amplitude, I will put it to 1.5. So you can see I have this kind of sine wave to animate the value inside the Vellum solver. So now we can see the results of our simulations. So we can go back to the SOP by clicking on this. And now you can display the Vellum solver and you can click on play to see the results. So at the moment, I have this kind of results. You can make it real time. So you can play with some setting with a sine wave if you want. Also, if you have some kind of huge spinning with a different element here, you can add a new constraint for the rocks like if you stick the, the rocks at the original positions. So let's add a vellum constraint. And here you can plug the constraint just, just after the shape match. So plug the geo here, plug the constraints. And let's remove these two lines here and let's replace them with the new constraints. So plug the geo here and the constraint here. And for this second uh, constraint, you can change it uh, to pin to target. So here for the pin type, you can change it from permanent to soft. And here we can play with some settings for the stiffness. So by default, the stiffness is very high. So in my case, I will put the value at something like 0.1, something like that. And now we can see the result of the Vellum solver. And you can see now I have a bit less movement in the rocks and I have something a bit more static. I think it's a bit better. But if you want to reduce the movement of the rock even more, you can just increase the value here of the stiffness. So you can make it at 10 or 100 or something like that. So now we have our simulations. So you can put that in cache if you want. So let's add a file cache node and you can rename it Vellum Inflations. And here you can put that in explicit and you can create a cache folder. And you can create a $OS folder, which is the name of the node. And now after the cache, we want to uh, animate our original geo based on that. So to do that, you can add a split node. And here with the first split node, we can take our inflation object. And here we can use a point deform node. So for the point deform, we have to plug the high raised geometry on the first input. We have to plug the low raised geometry on the second input. And we have to plug the animated geo on the last input of the point deform. And now you can see I have my high raised geometry, which is animated very fast. So we can do the same, but for the second one, which is the rocks. So let's add a new split node. And here with this split node, we can select the rocks, which is here. And now let's add a point. Uh, deform and here we can take the rocks in high res for the first input you can take the rocks in low res for the second input and you can take the animated rocks for the last input and now you can see that you have the rocks moving based on the vellum simulations so now you can add a null and let's specify this is the output for the rocks so you can rename it out rocks and you can add a null for this one and for this null you can rename it something like out inflations and that's pretty much it. Now you have your two objects. We have one object for the inflations and you have one object for the rocks. And you can make your look dev based on that. So that's it for this tutorial, guys. Don't forget you can download the project file with the link in the descriptions. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check artivoxar.com to get premium 3D resources. You can access to this project file with our Artifiles membership. See you in the next one. Bye.